All right, so this video we're going to go over like the first more advanced derivative rule, which is going to be product rule. Um, one thing about product rule is if you end up having the product of two functions, one thing that you cannot do is you can't just say like f prime times g prime and be like, we're done. It doesn't work that way, okay? You have to kind of like take turns taking derivatives, if you will. And I do prefer this notation down here. And so if I need to find j prime of x, then I take the derivative of f first and then just multiply by g. And then it doesn't matter the way you do this. And I say, okay, leave f alone this time and then take the derivative of g. So I wanna show you how to do this in a couple examples. Um, first is how we would do this maybe with power rule. So in order to do this with power rule, I would need to distribute and expand this. So we'd get three x to the fifth minus five x cubed, six x cubed, and then minus 10 x. And so I would end up getting that j is 3x to the fifth plus x cubed minus 10x. Well, then j prime is 15x squared plus, sorry, 15x to the fourth plus 3x squared minus 10. Okay, not super terrible to do it that way. Um, you kind of do algebra first and then take the power rule derivative second. Um, but I want to show you how to do this using product rule because this is a product of two functions. So this is my f and this is my g. And so I can say j prime is equal to f prime, so 2x times g plus leave f alone and then times the derivative of g. So I kind of take turns taking derivative the derivatives of each function and add them. When you do that, you end up getting 6x to the fourth minus 10x squared, plus I end up getting 9x to the fourth plus 13x squared minus 10. So notice we get the same answer no matter which way we do it. Um, it's just sometimes you have to use product rule because you can't just use power rule or, or distribute out first, I should say, and then use um, power rule. But I wanted to show you that it does, it does work um, if you do have polynomials here to do either one. All right, let's look at this example. This is more just for notation's sake. Um, j of x is f times g. Use the product rule to find j prime of 2, and then it gives us just some outputs here. Well, let's write just j prime of x first. That's going to be f prime times g plus f times g prime. So if I need to find j prime of 2, then I'm just going to plug in these values that they gave. So f prime at 2 is negative 4. g at 2 is 1 f at 2 is 3, and g prime at 2 is 6. So I get negative 4 plus 18, and I get 14 here. All right, let's keep it going. So if I need to find these derivatives, f prime, derivative of the first would be 2x, times, leave the second alone, plus the first times the derivative of the second. Let's look at B. G prime would be the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. Let's find H prime. Derivative of the first is just e to the x times the second, leave it as sine of x, plus the first times the derivative of the second. Now, sometimes you're going to be able to do some factoring, do some simplifying. Like on this first one, I notice a common factor of x and e to the x. 
I'm left with 2 plus x. So if I needed to like find horizontal tangents, find zeros of the derivative, um, you might need to do some algebraic manipulation in order to do that, okay? Here I get natural log of x plus 1. Um, I could try to figure out when that's equal to 0 as well. Here I could factor out an e to the x if I needed to, sine x plus cosine x. And so know that like, yes, the product rule gets us to this point and that's great, but it is possible that you might need to do some algebraic manipulation depending on what else you need to do with that derivative as like a next step.